Hello, Grade 11s. Welcome to this lesson on multiple and coordinate covalent bonds. Let's join Diyasha for some examples of multiple bonds. Atoms can form multiple covalent bonds if they need more than one electron to complete their valence shells. Let's have a look at the Lewis structure of oxygen. The oxygen atom has six electrons in the valence shell. Can you see oxygen has two unpaired electrons? This atom needs to gain two electrons or share two electrons in order for this valency shell to be full. Notice that the unpaired electrons are next to each other. When another oxygen atom comes close to this atom, they can combine. And they will share the two pairs of electrons. This is called a double covalent bond. Can you draw the Cooper structure of the oxygen molecule? Remember that for the Cooper structure, each shared pair of electrons is represented by a stripe. So the Cooper notation for oxygen is OO with two stripes to represent the double covalent bond. Now, what about the chemical formula of the oxygen molecule? The molecule has two atoms of oxygen. So we write the chemical formula of oxygen as O2. Nitrogen is in group 5 in the periodic table, which means that it has 5 valence electrons and a valency of 3. Can you draw the Lewis structure of a nitrogen atom? Look, here are the three unpaired electrons. These can be shared to form three bonds in order to fill the outer energy level. When another atom of nitrogen comes close to this one, three pairs of electrons overlap to form three bonds between these atoms. This is a triple bond. The Cooper structure is much simpler to draw. Remember, we must have one stripe per shared pair and here we have three shared pairs. So we can draw in three stripes between the nitrogen atoms. I think you can see that the chemical formula for this nitrogen molecule must be N2. When carbon burns in oxygen, the gas carbon dioxide forms. This name gives us a clue as to what the chemical formula should be. Remember the prefix di means two. So this means that for each carbon atom, there must be two oxygen atoms. So the chemical formula must be CO2. Let's check this by looking at the Lewis structures of carbon and oxygen. Notice carbon has four unpaired electrons and oxygen has two unpaired electrons. So one oxygen atom can share two electrons with the carbon atom to form a double bond. But the carbon still needs to share two more electrons to become stable. This means a second oxygen atom needs to form another set of double bonds with the carbon atom. Now, let's check if we can use valencies to work out the chemical formula for this gas. Carbon is in group 4 and has a valency of 4. Oxygen is in group 6 and so has a valency of 2. Remember that the valencies help us to work out the ratio of atoms in each compound. In this case, the ratio of the valency of carbon to the valency of oxygen is 4 is to 2. But chemical formula must be written in the simplest ratio. The ratio of 4 is to 2 can be simplified to 2 is to 1. Now we can swap the ratio to get the ratio of carbon to oxygen, which is 1 is to 2. This means that for each carbon atom, we need two oxygen atoms. So we are correct in writing the formula of carbon dioxide as C. O2. Another way of naming this compound is to use the valency of carbon. So you may see CO2 called carbon 4 oxide. 
Let's work through one more example of a molecule with a multiple bond before we move on. Hydrogen cyanide. Its formula is HCN. Let's look at each of the atoms which make up this molecule, hydrogen, carbon, and nitrogen. We know that hydrogen is in group 1 and has one electron. It can form one bond as it shares this electron, so it has a valency of 1. Carbon is in group 4. It has four valence electrons. Carbon also has a valency of 4 since it can form four bonds as it shares its four valence electrons. We can rearrange this diagram and represent a carbon atom like this. Nitrogen is in group 5. It has five valence electrons. It can form three bonds when it shares these three electrons. So nitrogen has a valency of 3. We can rearrange this diagram and represent a nitrogen atom like this. So here we have the Lewis dot representations for a hydrogen atom, a carbon atom, and a nitrogen atom. The hydrogen atom bonds with the carbon atom with a single bond. The carbon and nitrogen atoms share three pairs of electrons. In other words, they form a triple bond between them. So the hydrogen cyanide molecule contains one single bond and one triple bond. So far, we have looked at bonds between atoms which each contributed electrons to be shared. We use different colors or shapes to represent the electrons contributed by the different bonded atoms. However, in some bonds, one of the atoms supplies both of the electrons to be shared and the other none. This is called a coordinate or dative covalent bond, which is a bond between two atoms, where one atom supplies both the electrons involved in the bond. Let's look at two examples of coordinate bonds, the ammonium ion and the hydronium ion. We've already seen the Lewis structure for the ammonia molecule. Notice that ammonia has three pairs of electrons which are shared between two nuclei, nitrogen and hydrogen. These are called bonded pairs. Ammonia also has one pair of electrons which belongs only to nitrogen. This is called a lone pair. When a hydrogen atom loses its electron, it becomes a positively charged hydrogen ion. This hydrogen ion can bond with a lone pair in ammonia to form a coordinate covalent bond. We call this ammonium ion a compound ion. It is a compound ion because it consists of more than one kind of atom. It is an ion because it has a charge. Let's look at another compound ion, the hydronium ion, also called the hydroxonium ion. The formula of this ion is H3O+. We've already seen that the water molecule can be represented in Lewis dot notation like this. Water has two bonded pairs of electrons and two lone pairs. When a hydrogen ion bonds with one of these lone pairs, a coordinate covalent bond is formed within the hydronium ion. And that's all for this lesson. Don't forget to check out other videos in this series, especially the task video. Also look at the Mindset website at www.mindset.co.za forward slash learn. Goodbye.